Hey there, Nick Janitakis here. In this video, we're going to go over how to solve the same programming problem a hundred different ways using 40 different programming languages. Now, in this video, we are not going to go over every single implementation solution for every language, but they are all here in this repo. And by the way, by the time you watch this video, this repo is probably going to be archived, but we'll get into the details of that in a bit. But basically, we have this one little coding challenge that was extracted out of a real life feature I was building. And Josie Valim, he made a tweet out requesting all developers to submit a solution using whatever programming language that you'd like. So that's what this repo is here. So, you know, all of these programming languages that you see here, there's multiple solutions for some of the languages. For example, if I go to Ruby here or whatever, you know, there's a couple of different solutions solving the same problem in different ways, but they're all here solving those problems. And here's a specific problem. So I found myself about a year ago developing a custom course platform, and I happen to be using Elixir for that. And I am brand new to functional programming, right? Most of my experience has been with imperative languages like Python and PHP and JavaScript and Visual Basic 6 back in the day. And I had this one problem where if I were working with something like Python, in my opinion, you know, it would be really easy to solve this problem, but I just didn't have the mental model or the understanding of how to solve this problem using a functional language like Elixir, which was, you know, basically I had a list of dictionaries and I wanted to loop over them, uh, nested dictionaries, by the way. And, you know, I wanted to update two counters as well as update an attribute in one of those dictionaries. Now in Elixir, you know, dictionaries are technically called maps and you're also not technically looping. You know, there's other ways to basically traverse a data structure. And I think the best way actually to go over this is maybe just take a look here at the expected input as well as the expected output. So, you know, I was building a course hosting platform and, you know, think about displaying something like a table of contents right on the side. So this course happens to have sections, right? These are similar to maybe chapters and every section has one or more lessons. So this JSON data structure here, and you know, JSON's here basically just convenience, right? If you're using Python, you'd use a dictionary. If you're using Elixir, you'd use a map, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but JSON is pretty generic for everyone. So that's why it's written in this format here. I'm not using JSON uh, technically, but you know, here's the idea, right? We have a list here and we have a list of sections. This is section number one here called getting started. You know, the, the text and stuff doesn't really matter. It's just like dummy data. And, you know, a section has multiple lessons. So this is section two. It has its own lessons, et cetera, et cetera. And what I wanted to do was basically create this output here, which is what we see. And there's a big difference between the input and output in the sense that, you know, now we have this position field because that position field was not in the input. So what I wanted to do basically was order these sections and lesson lessons in a specific order. And, you know, that's where this position comes into play, right? So getting started would be position one. You know, the second one would be position two et cetera, et cetera. Now, uh, the interesting part, you know, with the nested aspect of it was, and keeping track of different uh, counters was, you know, the lessons also have a position, right? We need to order them in the specific section. And I wanted things to be set up in such a way where uh, the lesson count would continue to be tallied up. Like for example, in section one here, you know, lesson number one is position one, lesson number two is position two. Then we jump over to section two here, you know, lesson count would be three and four and, you know, so on and so on. Now, there is one little like monkey wrench thrown in here in that a section can technically have a property called reset lesson position. And if that happens to be set to true, then the lesson count would begin at one instead of just carrying on to be five and six in this example, if this happens to be false like this one. So that's basically the problem, right? You know, how to do this nested loop, update a couple of counters as well as modify uh, this dictionary, let's call it, right? So, and by the way, you know, before we go into the solution itself, spoiler alert, uh, you know, this repo probably is going to be archived by the chance you watch this video. But if you do want to submit a solution below in the comments and adjust, you know, just for fun, that could be pretty cool. But, you know, keep in mind, spoilers, uh, you know, if you wanted to try to solve this on your own, pause the video because we are going to go over how I solve this problem in Python right now. So, you know, we just wanted to give a sample solution here in the readme file. So, you know, I decided to just uh, provide one in Python, right? So, you know, I had this sections dictionary here, which, you know, I just converted that JSON into a dictionary. I didn't bother putting it here in the readme because, you know, it's just repeating exactly what's here, right? But in a Python dictionary instead. So the solution, at least I feel for my brain and imperative brain was uh, about as straightforward as it gets to me, right? It's like, okay, I'm going to keep track of these position counters. So, okay, I need a counter for the section and the lesson. Great, got it. And then what I'll do is I'll just loop over all the sections. So for a section in sections. And, you know, if that reset lesson position uh, Boolean value here happens to be true, 
then we're just going to set the lesson counter to be one. Otherwise, we're not going to do anything, right? That's all we have to do there when this is set to true. You know, otherwise, what we'll do is we'll just set the position of the section to be the section counter because we are looping over multiple sections here and it starts at one. Great. And then we'll just increment the counter, you know, to be itself plus one, just adding one to it. And then we'll just do an inner loop here to say for all the lessons in the section, then we'll do the same exact thing. But this time around, the lesson position will be the lesson counter and we'll increment the lesson counter by one. And that's really all there is to it, right? Two loops here where we just update the counter. And then if that other uh, section, you know, reset lesson position happens to be set, then we just reset the, the counter. And then at the end, you know, we get uh, a final solution here. So if I go to some code here and I actually run Python 3, Python solution, this is actually the code repo, by the way, just cloned down. If I run this, then, you know, we get the output here. It's a little bit hard to read. It's all on one line here. Actually, I just wanted to show you that it actually works here. But, you know, going back to here, this output here, what we see is literally the output in the terminal except it's been formatted for JSON here. But it's the same exact thing, right? All these things increment uh, how they need to be. It gets reset to be true here. And, and you know, that's the problem and this is the solution. So with Elixir, I found this to be very hard, right? Because I didn't really have any uh, prior functional programming experience. So, you know, there are four comprehensions, but you know, when it came to Elixir, it was a little bit tricky. So I went on to IRC and I asked for help and Josie was very kind to spend about a half an hour walking me through a, a really nice Elixir solution where if I go to here, Elixir, I think his is the MapReduce one. So, you know, this is the same solution for, let me get that in one line there. There we go for Elixir, right? The data structure is up here. I'm just not going to bother showing that, right? But, you know, here's how you can use like MapReduce and counters and et cetera, et cetera, to do all of this. You know, this to me, it, it, it's more difficult to read because, you know, functional programming is harder for me, right? There are so many different types of developers in the world where someone might look at this and be like, of course, like, this is how your brain thinks. Mine does not. So that's why I had the problem. Uh, and, you know, it kind of prompted Jose to put this out here because he was interested to see how other folks would solve this problem, you know, specifically with functional programming languages, you know, just to see, you know, what it looks like. So that's basically how this repo came into existence, you know, how we ended up having all these solutions here in a couple of days. And, uh, you know, it was really fun being a part of this. So we both were merging PRs, but it was pretty crazy. Like, like on the first day, we had something like 60 pull requests where we kind of just, you know, uh, merge them in as, uh, as needed. So that's basically yeah, how this went down. So it was a pretty fun experiment. Uh, I'm happy that everyone took part in it. Um, I hopefully Jose got what he wanted out of this here because, you know, he is pretty popular on Twitter, like 40,000 followers is pretty cool. Like we didn't post this really anywhere else, like Hacker News or Reddit. It kind of just all came from this one tweet. You know, we did try to post that on Hacker News towards the end, but uh, just wasn't meant to be, never got the upvotes. But yeah, it's pretty cool. I'll link to all the stuff in the description like usual, right? If you want to check out um, just how you can implement a same solution in different programming languages is pretty cool because there were some uh, pretty cool ones in here like APL for example in case you've never seen APL before it's basically like alien uh, like hieroglyphics mixed with like encrypted NES cheat codes right that's my running joke with this one here because you look at this stuff and you're just like all right that's pretty cool but someone actually knows how to programming in that in that language I'm sure multiple human beings do and uh, there are some other really nice ones as well like unexpected that I've never heard of before uh, quite a lot of them but like when Yan over here is like a programming language in uh, ancient Chinese so that was pretty cool never knew that it existed but uh now I know that it's there now there is one language not here and by the way this is an open request so you know this will be archived by the time you watch this video but if you happen to know how to write brainfuck code and you can always uh, check that out if you just google for brainfuck wiki you'll find a wiki it's an, a real programming language uh, we will unarchive the repo and uh, merge that in if you happen to do it and then we'll just archive the repo again so uh, yeah, go check that out if you if you want to have some fun trying to figure out how in the world that works. But uh, yeah, that's about it for this video. Hope you really enjoyed it. Let me know if you like these types of things, by the way, because uh, it could be kind of cool maybe to just have like a running series on this channel. You know, it's not going to be with Jose or anything, but, you know, maybe I can propose some, you know, common programming problems that I come across, you know, developing real life applications, little ones that will take like, you know, five to 15 minutes to implement. And, uh, you know, maybe we can do this on a regular basis. Like every couple of months, I'll put one of these types of videos up and then we can go over some solutions or something like that. If you want to see something like that, let me know in the comments below. If not, no worries. You know, it could be something fun. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see how it goes in there. Uh, so if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.